In a totalitarian country, a pregnant young woman flees inside a shipping container on a cargo ship. During a storm, the ship sinks, leaving her trapped in the container, adrift at sea. In the midst of a desperate escape from Spain, Mia and her husband Nico, while she is pregnant and terrified, hide in a container with the help of an activist network as helicopters hunt people like them, joining other refugees in search of a better life. The couple shares moments of distress, remembering the daughter who was taken from them by the oppressive and authoritarian regime. During the time they wait to be taken, new people fill the container, but soon there is a division, and amid the confusion, Mia and Nico are separated, leaving Mia alone among strangers. The container crosses a city in chaos, and she witnesses unimaginable horrors. Women and children trapped in cages, causing her to cry bitterly. The truck is stopped by a checkpoint team, causing panic. Everyone tries to make as little noise as possible while the agents enter the container for inspection. But there's a false wall inside, and they soon realize it and give them the option to exit. Desperate, Mia sees two crates and climbs on top. But one of the refugees, believing the agent's words, opens the false door, and a tragedy befalls them all, being mercilessly eliminated. Only Mia survives. After the tragedy, the agents remove the bodies and clean the container while Mia holds her breath to remain silent. When they close the container, she sends an audio message to her husband, desperately asking him to hide. Now alone, with the container being loaded onto the ship, she watches helplessly as chaos ensues while trying to contact Nico. On her first night inside the container, the ship encounters a severe storm on the high seas, causing it to sway and displace other containers. Mia tries to seek help from the crew while being tossed in all directions, but the force of the sea and the winds is so strong that the container flips over, plunging into the sea, causing Mia to lose consciousness upon impact. Upon waking up, wounded and disoriented, she realizes that she is lost in the ocean. She quickly searches for something that might help her make contact because her smartphone has a cracked screen from the impact. She finds a bag containing a cell phone, a thermos, a flashlight, a drill, glow sticks, and a water bottle. She attempts to use the found cell phone, but it requires a pin code she doesn't have. Desperately searching for something to eat inside the container, she discovers containers of wooden boxes, utensils, hoodies, earphones, televisions, and bottles of alcoholic drinks. On the floor, she finds a Swiss Army knife and adhesive tape. Suddenly, she hears screams and realizes that the container her husband was in is close to hers. As she watches the container sink slowly, she desperately tries to make contact, but everyone inside it, due to the weight, is pulled into the depths of the ocean. Now, Mia feels completely alone, but she finds a ray of hope when she feels her baby moving in her belly. Tears roll down her face as she tries to find comfort in a corner of the container. Amid the silence of her first night adrift at sea, she hears the song of whales, which startles her, but she lies back down. The next day, she is awakened by the box that was hanging from the container's ceiling falling, and quickly, due to the bullet holes, the entire space fills with water. She struggles to save herself, but ends up waking from her dream and the fear of dying in that way. Determined to survive, Mia begins to make plans to ensure that the container will last until it reaches dry land. She then starts to carefully identify everything inside the container and finds another bottle of water, a loaf of bread, a can of sardines, a lighter, a flashlight, a pen, and a rubber duck. Using everything she finds within the container, she puts her ideas into practice meticulously. With the sealing rubber from the containers, she tries her best to plug all the holes that are causing the container to fill with water, balances the weight of the crates to one side to reduce water intake through the holes, and makes markings to monitor how much water is entering while setting a limit at the same height as the boxes where she'll sleep. As Mia organizes everything, her cell phone rings, it's Nico, her husband. He explains how he survived, and she feels immense relief hearing his voice. She explains to him the desperate situation she's in, 
Nico promises to find her at all costs. During the night, Mia starts to experience contractions, her water breaks, and she goes into labor amid a massive storm raging outside, violently shaking the container. Mia is overwhelmed by intense pain. Everything around her has turned into complete chaos, the pains of labor, the furious storm, and her fierce determination to survive it all. The baby is born healthy, and Mia takes refuge in a box while the newborn's incessant cries fill the container. During the ordeal, the cell phone she had found falls into the water, leaving her without communication. On her third day, she manages to cover the baby by tearing up the clothes inside the container and protects the baby in one of the boxes. She tries to breastfeed but is unsuccessful. Then she has an idea when she looks at the holes in the container and notices the drill right in front of her. With fierce determination, Mia attempts to create a hole in the container, desperately seeking an escape to the surface. Meanwhile, she tries to feed the baby without success, but makes a silent promise that they would get out of there together and be okay. After several frustrating attempts, with the baby's crying increasingly moving and distressing her, Mia finally manages to produce milk and breastfeed the baby, bringing momentary relief to her anguish. After already three days and needing to produce milk, Mia has no choice and consumes the little she has, the sardine and the bread. Continuing her attempt to escape to the top, Mia keeps drilling the container, fearing that the water would reach its limit. However, the drill stops working, leaving her with no options. During the night, desperate and hungry, she's forced to resort to the gestational bag to satisfy her hunger. While she was eating, she hears a very loud sound from a marine animal that is getting closer to the container, and it startles her, hitting the container once. She rushes to grab the baby to protect it. On the second hit, she starts screaming and banging on the walls for the animal to go away, and it eventually does. In a moment when she tries to change the SIM card for her smartphone, which has a broken screen, she gets furious and at that moment, she looks at the Swiss army knife and has another idea. Mia continues trying to pierce the container using the knife, for a long time and effort, making her hands bleed. But on her sixth day of trying, already completely out of energy, the instrument also breaks. By that day, Mia had run out of water and food, exhausted and very hungry. She looks up and notices the condensation on the ceiling, tries to drink the droplets and collect them in the bottle, but shortly after, this makes her feel nauseous and she vomits. Exhausted, hungry, and thirsty, she begins to have hallucinations about her older daughter, who was taken by the government. The girl questions why Mia allowed them to take her, and Mia, flooded with guilt, cries and begs for forgiveness. At that moment, a comforting vision of her husband appears, assuring her that she was not to blame for the child's abduction. Rain begins to fall, and Mia manages to collect some water to quench her thirst in all the containers she can find, including the sardine can, which, being in her hand, gives her another idea. Determined to find a way to escape, she uses a strap that held the cargo to widen the hole she had made in the container. With all her strength, she manages to open up a gap filling with emotion as she reaches the surface with her baby in her arms. Once on top, she changes the baby's clothes and discards the diaper into the sea, where she notices a large number of fish in the water trying to feed on the remains. Determined not to give up, Mia tries to fish using an improvised harpoon made from aluminum and equipment screws, but initially, with no success. However, her luck changes when she spots an airplane passing by, Quickly, she re-enters the container to break a piece of the TV screen and try to get the aircraft's attention. Mia, as she climbs back up, deeply injures her leg, causing intense bleeding. Nevertheless, she still tries to catch the airplane's attention, but without success. With courage and pain, she searches inside the TV for something to close the lead wound. And with pieces of copper from the electrical wires, she stitches herself up cleaning and using alcohol as an anesthetic to feel less pain. Despite the agony, Mia manages to close the wound, determined to survive and find a way to be rescued. With the available headphone wires, Mia skillfully crafted an improvised fishing net. 
Using the baby's feces as bait, she manages to catch a fish, temporarily alleviating her voracious hunger. With this source of food, Mia can sustain herself for a while. Besides fishing, she tries to send out pleas for help by spreading messages across the sea. On a silent night while holding her baby in her arms, Mia reveals that she was a teacher, showing some family photos, including Nico. She explains to the baby that her name is Noah, the feminine form of Noah, revealing that it's a girl. Mia shares the tragic story of her older daughter, how she begged to go out for just five minutes and was taken by the authoritarian regime. The baby begins to show signs of a cold, and Mia does her best to care for her. Using the few pieces of clothing they had to keep her warm, she gently sings until the baby falls asleep, and then, exhausted, she holds her and sleeps. In the middle of the night, Mia was awakened by suspicious noises and decided to climb to the top of the container. That's when she received the long-awaited call from Nico. However, the news wasn't good. Nico explained that he had tried to escape in a boat inside another container but was discovered after an unsuccessful escape attempt, and he was shot. In tears, Nico told Mia that he had tried to find them but without success. In a tone of farewell, he asked her to survive. Mia informed Nico that the baby was fine and had already been born. He was moved by the news. Mia placed the phone near the little Noah, allowing Nico to speak to the newborn daughter before the phone's battery ran out. In her grief, Mia finds a small comfort in a piece of candy tucked away in one of her coats, remembering that Nico had given it to her, while tears roll down her face in a mix of sadness and determination. Several days have passed, and now they are on their 16th day of survival adrift in the ocean, tired of eating raw fish, and with water reaching the container's limit, forcing Mia to stay only on the top part. While she organizes everything for the day the container will sink, improvising with the wooden parts of the crates and containers, she makes a small raft so that her daughter can be safe when that day comes. During that day, a seagull is attracted by the smell of fish and lands on the container, giving them hope that dry land might be near. As the water reaches the upper limit mark, the patched holes begin to give way under the water pressure. She quickly realizes that she needs to retrieve the family photos from inside. While searching for them, she notices a container with chocolate inside. Suddenly, the container starts sinking rapidly. She panics, and her feet get entangled in various cargo straps. The baby is left alone but protected by the raft, which is carried away by the turbulent waters. Mia struggles to free herself as the container sinks. Using the Swiss Army knife, she takes a deep breath, knowing it will be her last moment. As the container is submerged, she manages to free herself and reach the surface. Now in the open sea, she frantically searches for the baby, terrified after having gone through all of that and now risking losing her daughter. But the same whale that fried her one of the nights comes close to the baby and squirts a little water, making her cry. This sound allows Mia to locate her, bringing momentary relief. However, now without the container to hold onto, Mia and the baby are adrift in the ocean. The cold is intense, but Mia asks the baby to hold on as they need to survive to tell their incredible story of resilience. Mia assures the baby that she did everything she could to protect her. Completely exhausted, Mia, knowing that there were seagulls in the area, had saved fish scraps in various containers and slowly exposed them to the sea so that the birds could smell them. For a long time, they stay in the sea until her plan works. Several seagulls start circling above them, in a boat with a family of fishermen approach us. Upon seeing the seagulls, they notice something unusual and decide to investigate. When they get close, they find only the baby, who has a fever. Desperate, the woman asks about her family. She looks around and sees a rope, starts pulling it, and finds Mia, drowned, unconscious. Then she begins performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation, but Mia doesn't wake up. Looking at the baby, the woman decides to keep trying to revive her. Finally, after agonizing moments, Mia regains consciousness and, still weak, asks about the baby with eyes full of concern. Meanwhile, they call for help on the radio. 
The woman with a gentle voice assures me that the baby is fine and safe. She looks around. Her eyes meet those of a child who smiles at her. Mia regains her consciousness and comes to terms with the fact that she has survived it all. Deeply moved because, at last, after so many challenges, they were safe. Don't forget to support the channel. Subscribe, like the video, leave a comment about what you thought of the movie, or continue by selecting one of the videos on the screen. We're wrapping up here. Until next time.